What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 52 of The Road to Glory here with FC United Manchester. Let me point my mic at my face, that would help you hear me better. Um, but no, today we've got a pretty tough tie, we're going to be playing Huddersfield Town uh, away. Uh, but before we get into that, got to cover the fixtures as always, so a quick look over the fixtures. The last episode, oh gosh, what was the last episode? I think it was the Sunderland game. So since the Sunderland game, we've been in pretty decent form. As you can see, uh, we did get two defeats in our period of time and a draw against Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, but with the exception of that, the team has played absolutely superbly. Uh, so the first result of the month was a 2-2 draw against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Pretty disappointing, but we came back from uh, behind 2-1 down to get the 2-2 draw late on. So it, it gave a kind of feel-good feel to that result despite us dropping two points. Then we had a, a few really tough ties. We had to play Blackpool and Ipswich, who were two teams really fighting for the playoffs. Uh, here you can see we beat Blackpool 3-1. Shane Barney grabbing a hat-trick. Uh, he played absolutely superbly, and Michael Lamb, when he missed the penalty, that was actually Pell Toller uh, saving the uh, penalty and goal. Pell Toller is now back in the first team as keeper. I dropped him for a few games, a few ep I think it was in episode 50, uh, but he's back now and he is playing a lot better for the break that he's had. Anyway, on the back of this, we came up against Ipswich Town and Shane Barney grabbed another two goals for us in a 3-1 win. Uh, I'm going to show you the highlight just to the very first goal. It was an insane goal to score. Uh, right from kickoff, uh, the whole team kind of played well in this. You'll see it's a really good passing goal, but this game as a whole, and I mean a lot of these games, we've just been outplaying and outpassing oppositions. I don't, I can't even remember if Ipswich get a touch of the ball before the ball hits the back of their net on this goal. Um, it was just a really well worked goal, and then Pal Tarry with the cool, calm, finessed finish into the top right corner over the keeper. Really good finish there. But that was that result. We won three one. We then had a game against Birmingham. Birmingham are really struggling in the league um, there, 23rd. So uh, it was important that we got a good result against them, and we did. 4-1 win. Shane Barney grabbing another hat-trick. Um, honestly, Shane Barney's won Player of the Month uh, in the last two months. He's won it for December and January, and he won it for October as well. He, he like, Let me show you his stats now. So, I mean, he's not the craziest player on stats, but as I reiterate... Uh, reiterate and we'll reiterate again his finishing and composure and off the ball stats and his acceleration and pace mean that he just is able to break through defences and use his explosive pace and cool calm head to bury the chances when they come his way. So far this season in the league, 26 appearances, 26 goals, 10 assists, 9 man of the matches, average rating of 7.9. He is the player to watch in the league and I will be amazed if he doesn't get player of the year. Uh, in the league and I'm actually tipping him for an England call up sooner rather than later if he continues in the vein of form he's in anyway our fourth win in a row came courtesy of a late Shane Barney goal 1-0 against Brentford really good goal for him there uh, Brentford aren't a bad team in the league so it was good to get the 1-0 win against them they are fifth um, and then on the back of this we got a 3-1 win against Brighton and Hove Albion and um Oddly enough, for once, Shane Barney did not score, which is <laughs> just seems to never happen these days. But it was still a very good 3-1 away win. Um, we took an early lead. They got a goal back. Two goals for us. Looking at the stats, uh, we were in real control of the uh, where the ball was. They had a lot of the possession, but they really didn't make anything of it. Anyway, as I mentioned uh, slightly earlier, we did get then get two back-to-back -back defeats. We first lost to uh, Nottingham Forest away. Danny Elliott, I went to school with this guy, I'm, I swear he scored against me when he was out on loan at, it must have been Oxford like four years ago, but he scored against us again uh, in the second minute and got them the win, so that was pretty disappointing, uh, but no, it's kind of odd when you see people who you went to school with scoring against you, and he, that's like his second goal he scored against me, so maybe, maybe he is my Achilles heel. But anyway, um, on the back of that, we got a 4-2 defeat away at Everton. A little bit disappointing, but Everton is never an easy place to go. And despite the fact we beat Everton in the league before, uh, this defeat, like, although it's disappointing, uh, it allows me to focus on the league and this promotion push that we're now on course to kind of try and do. Anyway, uh, the next game was an away win against Crew Alexandria. Crew Alexandria, I can't even say that name. We'll just call them Crew. Crew, Crew Alexandra. There you go, guys. I said it properly. Um, Shane Barney grabbing both of the goals in that 2 0 win. Really convincing stuff. And then, last but not least, we had West Brom at home. And 
true to form, we beat them 3-2. This is the second time this season in the league that we've played them. Both games finished 3-2 to us, and Shane Barney grabbing another hat-trick. Honestly, this guy is the most clinical striker in the league. He is burying any chance that comes his way. I was looking at the player tables, um, if I show you them. He has the highest shot on target ratio in the league at 61%, and 26 goals, highest average rating, um, almost the most man of the matches. Absolutely insane stuff to see Shane Barney doing so well. The team as a whole is performing really well. We've had a few players out, and as you can see, we have been hit pretty hard by injuries and international duty. Uh, a few transfers to tell you about on the transfer front. Uh, Alex Evans is going out at the end of the year to Linfield in Northern Ireland. Uh, real fantastic servant to the club, but, you know, he's just not good enough anymore. It's sad to say because he has been here for, well, this is his seventh season, so... Um, yeah, it's sad to see him go, but he just really he just isn't good enough at the moment. So he he's there. Um, in terms of ins, one player to tell you about: William Perrine coming to us at the end of his contract. Just a good backup centre back. Um, really going to be the kind of fifth or sixth choice, but nevertheless, he'll be a good player for us. He has some decent tackling and decent um, marking, uh, so he, he has potential as a centre back. He's still only twenty, so there's plenty of time for him to improve. Um, was there anything else really? Oh, um, Mohamed Ali Paul has gone out on loan and so has Angus Gunn. And then uh, David McCallum has gone out on loan also. Uh, you may remember this guy came in at the start of the year to play left mid. Really hasn't broken into the first team, just simply not good enough. Um, I brought him in as backup, but we've not really struggled too much in the injury front. And a lot of my attacking midfielders who I brought in, having brought him in, um, have adapted well to being able to play on the left wing. So that's worked out well for us. Uh, we've had a thumb out with an injury. This is going to be his return game. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs. Um, but no, other than that, not a lot to tell you about really. Uh, looking at the league table, we've 32 games played to so 14 matches left. We are currently in second place. Uh, we're tied on points with Cardiff, who are in third. West Brom are two points ahead of us and top of the league. Uh, the league is unbelievably close. In terms of fixtures, depending on how things go, I think the next video will be the Cardiff City game. And then I may well live com the last five or six games of the year as well. So you guys will have to stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, we've got to focus on the present. We are playing Huddlesfield away. Huddlesfield find themselves... Um, where the hell are they? Huddlesfield, Huddlesfield, Huddlesfield. I'm going blind. 15th. So you'd expect us to get a win here. Uh, gonna be interesting to see how we get on. Uh, Montgomery and um, oh, what's his name, Musavi, are out at the moment uh, on international duty in the Asian Cup. So we are slightly deflete, uh, depleted in that regard. However, uh, you'd still expect us with the players we've got to really get a good result here away at the Galpalm Stadium. So, let's get straight into this. I'm hoping Shane Barney can grab another few goals. He's been absolutely insane this year. Like. Obviously, he kind of struggled in his first year at the club, and then last year he was an essential part of our push-up uh, kind of League One. And now we find ourselves in here uh, in the Prem, in the Prem, in the Championship, pushing for the Prem, and he is leading the way. He is looking like the Championship's hottest striker. He's not actually top goal scorer. He's behind Sean Scannell in that regard. He plays for West Brom. However, he's got 10 assists in 26 games as well as 26 goals. Um, and just... You know, his performances alone have led to him uh, kind of being the player of the year, for me at least so far. But we've got a chance here. Uh, it's hit the cro crossbar. Let me switch to 2 D pitch view because I know not everyone can see uh, the ball when we have those highlights on in 3D. But we'll still have the highlights come on after the goals. Um, anyway, 0-0 at the moment. Um, good, good stuff at the moment. Playing well. Um, I'm happy with your solid defensive work. Okay, you've lost focus. That's fine. You, that's fine. You do that. Um, unlucky so far, good effort passionate, Shane Barney you weren't bad but you can improve, I have faith in you I have faith in Shane Barney whenever I say that he seems to grab a second half hat trick which he probably won't do now because I've said it but uh, I don't know, he's grabbing like a brace every other game it would seem or at least two goals which is pretty crazy, we've got a chance here, it hits the post Graziano could have had his first goal for the club but instead it cannons off the post. That's a good sign though um, in this half. Looking at the stats, we are in control of this game however. We're yet to really create create any killer chances but we've got the ball here. Can we spread the ball a boo? A fun. Barney is in the centre. A fun with the long edge effort. Hits the woodwork again. 
can I film get the ball in? I'm, tr I'm still tr oh Barney's there. Barney is there. I want a second half hat trick. I've called it. Uh, but no, what I was saying was, a fun has been injured, but I am training him to play left attacking mid. And since he's kind of played that inside, you know, cut inside winger role, despite his lack of place, uh, pace, and his kind of, kind of quite physical target man-like stats, he's really adapted well to that role there of kind of playing in the killer balls. Um, so yeah, that's good to see. Uh, fantastic to see Barney get on the score sheet. And he's got another chance here, and he's buried it again. That's 2-0. Shane Barney, two goals in three minutes. Could he grab a hat-trick after I've called it? That would be pretty mental. Um, Glenn Stewart's taken a knock. I am going to sub him off just because uh, now that we've got a two-goal cushion, I feel comfortable kind of slightly weakening, weakening our defensive unit. But that was still a really good goal. Ball threaded through. Shane Barney just beats the keeper with the diving header and gets into the bottom left-hand corner. I, I seriously can't express how insane Shane Barney's been. Um, obviously I brought in like Kevin Doyle and he's done nothing and we've got another chance here hits the post was that or did the keeper save it good save by the keeper in fact uh, but no I don't know what we do without Shane Barney because like he has literally been grabbing like 90% of the goals for the team which isn't a bad thing but if he gets injured we could be in trouble uh, I mean we have got players like a Fum who can step in uh, and we've got an injury to Mayo. I'm going to just take him off. Better to be safe than sorry. Uh, bring on Fisher uh, for the last eight minutes of this game. Shane Barney still on two goals. Can he get a third? That would be good to see. Um, but no, that's another really good win, it would seem, if we can get the win, which I assume the ref's now going to just blow, unless there's a chance for a hat-trick. No, there's not, but no. That's insane. Graziano, rock of the defence, according to the... Commentator, he's been really good. I'll quickly show you his stats. Obviously, he came in during episode 50, the 19 year old Italian man. He's going to be turning 20 very soon, but since he's come to the club, 18 appearances, 7.49 average rating. You can't argue with that. He's been absolutely insane. Go tell the lads they played well. Uh, good to see Shane Barney getting man of the match yet again. And looking at the league table, West Brom have slipped up and we go top of the league. Wow. Well, that, that's kind of a shock. Birmingham being the team who beat them as well. So they've leapfrogged into 20th. Um, but no, that's really good to see. Uh, we are now top on goal difference ahead of Cardiff City. But that good 2-0 uh, win helps our goal difference even further. Uh, so no, things are going absolutely insanely here, guys. I think the next episode will be the game against Cardiff. Um, which is fairly soon. It's at the start of next month. Um... There'll be not. There's actually not that many games to play. There'll only be four matches next episode that I have to cover. So I might do the Cardiff game, and then we'll be able to see what's what going into the end of the season. And can we really mount a serious challenge at the top of the league to win the championship and get back-to-back -back promotions into the Premier League? It's going to be exciting. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to it. Uh, other than that, guys, if you've got any comments, want to ask me anything with regards to the save, as always, leave it down in. Uh, down below and I will get back to you and other than that guys I'll talk to you in a bit it's me Jack and I'm out